<clears throat> Dr. Dara Bloom. I will skip adding in the date and time for reasons I don't believe need explaining. I had spent the past week monitoring 3266's amended schedule, and I believe today is my best shot at getting as much documented as possible. I'll have a few hours of uninterrupted time with her in which to return the files and attempt to discover how aware Subject 3266 is of not only her own genetic makeup, but what she may know about Dr. Kumar. I will, of course, be treading lightly, as I do not wish to set off any sort of emotional upset in Subject 3266, but... I also know this is my one shot at all of this. Here goes nothing. I think I held my breath that entire time. Okay, everything is fine. The files are back where they belong and she should be arriving any... Hello there, my friend. I, I hope you don't mind, but I went ahead and started setting up the camera and our activities for today. Oh, no, no rush at all. You go ahead and get yourself comfortable at the table, and I'll be right with you. I do have a few things that we need to talk about that may be difficult for you to understand, or perhaps a bit uncomfortable. But I want you to know that we can take our time, all right? If you need a break here or there, I won't be upset with you. I thought this week we could focus in a bit more on your relationship and connections. How you found your time here at the lab, and perhaps even discuss some of what you were working on with Dr. Kumar. It's, it's all right, 3266. It's all right. You can trust me. I will not punish you for anything you tell me, and I will keep our conversation between us. I got the go-ahead from Dr. Manning to keep this part of my studies unincorporated. Unincorporated. Well, that means that the work we do here together will not be added into the files in the same way as our other work. It's, it's more for me to do a check on my current hypothesis and if it does, in fact, alter anything, it's at my discretion as to how I document and include the process of my findings. It's a convoluted way of saying I will be asking you some questions without anyone knowing, which means I need you to trust me and follow my lead. Don't worry about the camera. It is on, but it's feeding the footage to a safeguard-enabled drive. You're safe, 3266. I would like to start by asking for your name. For some reason, there was not one included in your files. Sometimes this is done in order to create separation between subjects and staff, but I'd say at this point in our work together, it would actually be stranger if I continued to refer to you as Subject 3266. I, I don't think I understand. You don't have a name, or you don't feel comfortable telling me? Subject 3266? Please. I know none of this is easy for you, but 
I need you to stop drawing for a moment and focus. All right, all right. We will move on if this is going to upset you. How about we shorten things then? I'll call you six, if that's all right with you. Wonderful. So, six, do you recall being admitted to this facility and into the care of Dr. K? Right, right, okay. No Dr. K. Okay. But the former portion of the question remains. Do you have any memory of being admitted to this facility? That is extremely irregular. I believe the youngest subject we ever admitted was eight years old, and that was only because he showed a great propensity for shifting. He was gifted. Or perhaps cursed, if our society is anything to go off of. So, his parents needed our help far sooner than we typically see. Well, according to what little paperwork I could salvage, you seem to have either been brought in as an infant, or... And I cannot stress how important it is that we discover the truth of this. You were born here, Six. Yes, I fear that may be the case. That your biological mother was affected greatly by lycanthropy and was admitted while pregnant with you in hopes of protecting you from the variant. Well, the problem with that is that you... <laughs> You're different, Six. You have the genetic variant for lycanthropy, but it seems to be dormant. And so I went digging and ran more blood tests, and it turns out you have a strain I've never seen before in any other subject. Well, no, it isn't harming you in any way. Quite the opposite, actually, if my hypothesis is correct. You have a strain that basically keeps you from turning and was useful in our creation of a better vaccine. This strain acts as a vault for lycanthropy. If a subject wishes to shift and puts their mind to it, they still are able to, but it prevents emotion-based shifts. Almost like giving you the keys to the car. It, leaves it up to each person whether they wish to shift or remain in human form through the crucial period up until their 25th birthday. It isn't something we knew much about before starting work on the RZ3C vaccine. There, there's a lot of information that was lost when werewolves were forced further underground a hundred years ago. Stories and Myths that held the keys to understanding lycanthropy were lost to us. And so we've had to rely on science to start to put the pieces back together. It was in that work that we came to understand there's a cap on first turns. If a person has not undergone their first phasing by their 25th birthday, it goes dormant. The variant remains as does the ability to turn, but it would take a great deal of training to access it. The problem with this is there are less than 50 cases on record of anyone with lycanthropy being able to make it that far without a first turning. The vaccine was meant to give the keys back to those who had turned, most often in their teen years. It's a wonderful thing we tried to do, and we could not have had the success we have without your help, only... Only this iteration you carry was hidden beneath the lycanthropy variant, and I'm not convinced that was by accident either. No, no, it's all right. The iteration doesn't seem to affect you at all, but... 
it was included in the vaccine, and now I'm worried. <clears throat> I'm concerned that we could have an outbreak of lichen and werewolf zombies if the vaccine continues to use your genetic code as its basis. And it sounds insane, doesn't it? It actually does get worse because the more time I spend with your genetic code, the more I'm convinced that even this variant was not naturally occurring. I'm afraid that your biological mother was tested on, that you were given this variant and they know exactly what will happen upon distribution. Leads me to the part I wasn't planning to bring up today. I have to get you out of here, Six, before they can hone in on my findings. I'll, I'll go ahead and grab her for you, Dr. Manning. Violet? What are you, I don't know what you did or who you pissed off, but we need to talk. Now. 